Hello everyone, this is Lexi, and for today's commander, we're going to be looking at Odric uh, Lunark Marshall. So, it is a four mana commander that says at the beginning of each combat, creatures control gain first strike until the end of the turn. If a creature control has first strike, and then we have this huge checklist of flying, death touch, double strike, haste, hex proof, indestructible, life leak, menace, reach, scope, trample, and vigilance. So if any of our creatures have any of these abilities during each combat step, um, all of our creatures are going to gain those abilities. So let's look into the creature package. We play Adeline because of Vigilance and the fact that it generates tokens when we attack our opponent. Arrow responded just for its um, keyword abilities. Acroma, Vixer, Vision of Ixidor. So basically... Um, this card is nuts because at the beginning of each combat until the end of your turn, each creature, um, not your turn, at the end of each turn, uh, each creature's um, you control gain plus one, plus one if it has any of these checklist abilities. So our creatures are going to get huge with, uh, this, with this creature. Um, next, we play Angel of Invention because of its abilities and the fact that it pumps the squad and also fabricates too. Um, the Overseer gives us Hexproof and Indestructible as long as we control a human. Bastion gives our commander creatures plus two, plus two, and Hexproof. I mean, Indestructible, sorry. Uh, Battlefield Raptor gives us Flying and First Strike. Um, the Marshal pumps the squad. Uh, Boonbringer Valkyrie for its abilities in the back of one. Crystalline Giant, which is one of my favorite cards in the deck, because at the beginning of each combat on our turn, um, we give it a random counter of any of this checklist. Danitha makes our ores and equipments cost one less, but we're using it more so for its abilities. Fencing Axe uh, Ace is a uh, double strike creature for two mana. God Eternal Ketra allows us to uh, create zombie tokens. Um, and then when it dies, uh, you may put it uh, third from the top. Healer's Hawk, uh, because of the Flying and Lifelink. Keeper of the Core to generate tokens um, and get lands if our opponent has more creatures or lands than us. Uh, same thing for Knight of the White Orchid. It gives us uh, lands on one of ETBs if an opponent controls more lands. We play the Lone Rider for the first strike in lifelink, and if we do gain three life, we get to transform it into this, which is a first strike, first strike trample and lifelinker. Loyal Warhound allows us to get us lands. Um, Managothra, the Diplomat, allows us to draw cards um, whenever opponent attacks us with two or more creatures, um, if they're attacking us, and if they cast their second spell each turn, we get to draw a card. Uh, Metropolis Reformer with Flying and Vigilance. It gives us Hexproof. And then whenever it is dealt damage, we gain that much life. Odric uh, Master T Tactician allows us to uh, choose how our opponent's creatures block as long as we attack with three other creatures. Oketra the Truth, uh, Double Strike and Indestructible, but it cannot attack unless you control three or more creatures. And then for four mana, we can generate a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with vigilance then we play ox drover to help us draw cards whenever etbs are attacks we make a two our opponent will make a two four white ox creature token but um this creature cannot be blocked by oxen next we play uh segovian angel for the flying and vigilance sears ascended as a solid one drop because if we do drop this turn one we're gonna have a six six with flying and lifelink um Skyhunter Skirmisher for the Flying and Double Strike, Skyhunter Strike Force uh, for the Flying and Melee, and um, as long as you control our commander, um, other creatures you control have melee. Then we have Speaker of the Heavens as a Vigilance Lifelinker, and if we do have seven more life than our starting life total, we can tap this as a sorcery to make an angel. Then we play Swooping Lookout for Flying and Vigilance, and lastly, Welcoming Vampire for Flying. And if one or more cre other creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield under our control, we get to draw, to draw a card, and this ability only triggers once per turn. For Sorceries, we have Cleansing Nova as removal for either creatures, artifacts, and enchantments. We get to choose one, cut a deal to draw three cards, Doomscar to wipe the board, 
Ravnica at War to wipe the board, especially if they have a bunch of multicolor permanents. It says all of our permanents are white. This does not affect us. Um, Secret Rendezvous allows us to draw three cards and a target opponent would draw three. Vanquishing the Horde to destroy all creatures and Wrath of God to destroy all creatures and it cannot be regenerated. Then, for instance, we play Call the Culper Coats to create a bunch of soldiers. Clever Concealment to phase out our target non-land permanents. We get to choose which ones. And it also has Convoke. Flawless Remover to protect our board from board wipes. Generous Gift for removal. Stroke of the Midnight for removal. And Unbreakable Formation to either pump the squad if we cast this during our main phase. Or just give our creatures indestructible. And our creatures, if we do cast it during the main phase, they will gain Vigilance. Ahem. <clears throat> For artifacts, we're playing Arcane Signet, Commander Sphere, Gauntlet of Power, Hedron Archive, uh, Heraldic Banner, Lightning Greaves, Marble Diamond, Nyx Lotus, Rogue's Glove, um, which allows us, uh, if a creature is equipped that deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. Skull Clamp to help us draw a bunch of cards. Soul Ring for Ramp, Swift Boots for Protection, and Sorna Animus to thin out our deck and get all the lands whenever we attack with a creature that is equipped by this. Next, we play uh, for enchantments. We're playing uh, Calvaric Alliance. When we attack with two or more creatures, we draw a card. And then we can pay two mana to discard a card to create a token. Dawn of Hope allows us to draw cards whenever we gain life or create tokens. Dawn of the New Age, um, when it ETBs, it gets a hope counter for each creature we control. Then at the beginning of our end step, we can remove a hope counter to draw a card if we do. And then... Um, if there are no more counters left on this, we sacrifice it and gain four life. Flower of the White Tree to give our legendary creatures plus two, plus one, and ward one. Now legendaries get plus one, plus one. Ghostly Prison to uh, slow down our opponents and force them to pay two mana for each creature attacking us. Um, Honor of the Pure just to pump our creatures for two mana. Monologue Tax uh, because whenever opponent casts their second spell, we create a treasure. And finally... To Sky is welcome. Whenever one or more creatures with mana value three or less enters the battlefield during our under our control, we draw a card, and this ability only triggers once per turn. As far as lands, we have three utility lands with Castle Ardenvale to create tokens, mana turfs to draw a card whenever we attack with two or more creatures, and we pay two. And then with Sprex Height, we hide away four. Um, and then we can play that card for free uh, if we attack with three or more creatures. So that's the deck in a nutshell. It's going to cost you $190. As you can see, we curve out at three mana. And that is it. So if you enjoyed this deck, uh, please leave a subscribe on YouTube. It will be uploaded to TikTok shortly. And have a good night.